I love guys stopping by once more because I figured people might not know about all the data governance features that you have actually inside of Fabric. Obviously, in my videos, I've been focusing a lot on the purview governance features. They are pretty cool, but there are also a lot of governance stuff you should think about inside of Fabric. So I'm going to show you really quickly an end-to-end -end demo that uh, highlights some of these features. Pay attention, please. Let's go. All right, I'm inside of Fabric, and what I'm going to start doing is just to jump into the admin portal. So obviously, a lot of governance things you can do inside of admin portal, but I want to show you the domain feature. This is a really cool uh, feature that allows you to group your organization based on their business domain, governance domain, data domains, whatever makes sense for you. You can also create subdomains here as well. And what you essentially do is that you assign workspaces towards each of these domains. So you're going to give this domain a good name. You can add image. You can add admins to the domain. You can add contributors. Those are essentially people that can help you with the governance of whatever domain. Or you can also set what is the de default domain here. And the default domain is also pretty cool because what you can do is that you can say that if uh, me, for instance, Martha, if she creates a domain, I know that Martha, she works with finance. So if she creates new uh, workspaces, then I want uh, that workspace to automatically be assigned to the finance domain, for instance. So if you have data stewards or data engineers or someone that you know is working towards specific domains, you can set up this to help you automatically uh, move those workspaces into the correct domain. That's really helpful. Now, there's also this brand new thing, which is called tags. So tags are essentially super flexible. You can create your own tags and give them a good name. Uh, so I've just set up some uh, things here, operational, project A, project B, and I'm going to come back to them. So just stay tuned for that. Now, the other feature I want to show you is the One Lake Data Hub. So if I open up this uh, data hub, you see here that I can search by all these different uh, domains that I have. Uh, and then specifically focus on the data that is uh, connected to one domain. I can also filter on specific items on the right side here, as you can see. Um, and then also see if something is specifically endorsed in my organization. Here you see I have master data, certified and promoted items uh, within my supply chain management uh, um, domain. So that's also pretty nice. And from my um, uh, data hub, which is essentially this discovery place where you can find all your data and understand it better. Now I can also go directly into my items from the One Lake Data Hub. So I can open up, for instance, this lake house and dig into the uh, data that I have here, look at the tables and files and so on. Or I can also look at the placements of the item. So what workspace does this uh, belong to? or what is the lineage for this specific item. So if I click at view workspace uh, lineage, I'm now being directly transported into the workspace of this item. And now I can see the impact analysis of this lake house, which is quite uh, powerful. So I can see what are the impacted child items of this lake house, what are the downstream items. Another thing I can do is that I can actually notify the contacts of the child items of my lake house. So let's say I'm going to make some changes, then I want all the child items that might be affected by this change to know, right? Because someone might be affected by this. Then this is also the place to go to find that list of contacts and let them know. Now, if you look at the workspace as a whole, you can also see that this workspace is connected to a domain with this icon here. And we see that we have workspaces outside of this workspace serving data into my lake house here specifically through the lineage. Now, if I click focus on this, I can then highlight what lineage I want to look at specifically. And what I can also do here is that if I go into settings of this lake house, I can now set up, for instance, uh, I mean, I'm going to zoom in, I could give um, sensitivity labels. So these are sensitivity labels that I've set up inside of purview in the security part of purview. Let's say that this is restricted. And then I can go back and look at the impact of that. And now we see that all my downstream items have now gotten this restricted label as well. So you can set up inheritance of your um, sensitivity labels so that downstream items inherit that. 
Now you can also endorse your data. You can say that it's promoted, certified, or even master data, which was also a new feature. And now we're in the tags again. So we're going to pause here a little bit because tags are cool. So if I go into the tags feature, now you see that I have created uh, three tags. I have one for operational, one for project A, one for project B. And obviously I could have created many more and I would do that in the admin portal. What I now can do is that I can say that this specific lakehouse is part of project A. Because obviously the domain grouping of workspaces is really nice. But what about items that are somehow connected, but then scattered across workspaces and also maybe across domains? That could, for instance, be project data. So let's say project A, we need some finance data. We need some operational data um, we might need some uh, product data as well and so on. All of that might be uh, relevant for this really important project. Then I can tag that towards project A and make it easier again for the project manager, for in instance, to understand where are all my assets towards my project. So this is really a cool feature. Obviously, I see the need uh, and use case for this for project management, but I'm sure there are more use cases. This is a brand new feature. So let me know what you think of this feature. And if you have any cool use cases, it's going to be interesting to see how we adopt this new uh, tag solution. And obviously you can call your tags, whatever you want. So it's super flexible. You could also even say that this is production or this is test data, or this is something else. So the imagination is your friend here. Go crazy and let me know what uh, use cases you come up with. You can also tag uh, multiple uh, and multiple tags. So I'm going to do that. And now you see here that we have added two more symbols. So we have it's certified, we have it's restricted, and we also have the two tags, project A and operation as well. So this is obviously making life easier for us to understand things. Um, and there's one more feature that I want to show you, and that's the Purview Hub. So essentially, this is the place that is sort of connected to Purview, but it's going to show you um, your, it's sort of the built-in data catalog, but obviously only focusing on your fabric data. So to me, this is a great tool for data stewards, uh, data product owners, so on, that want to see, oh, how, how good are we doing on sensitivity labels? Are we, are we adding sensitivity labels to all our things? What about endorsements? Um, well, how are the domains separated and uh, grouped in our organization and so on? So this is a good place to get that overview. But obviously, if you want your total ecosystem uh, view, then you need to go to the actual data catalog, which is Microsoft Purview. So here you see on top here, you have some links. So you can click them, and then you will be sent to the governance features from the data catalog perspective in Purview or the information protection, data, data loss prevention, and so on, which is the security so features of Purview. OK, intense demo. We went through all the things. Um, let me know if some of these features were new to you. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye.